Coming up this week on Ride the Lightning, the Tesla Motors unofficial podcast, Model X's in new colors are popping up in the wild. Aston Martin finally goes electric, but takes a shot at Tesla along the way. And Forbes names Tesla the most innovative company in the world. Party on, Wayne. Welcome to the show. It's Ride the Lightning, the Tesla Motors unofficial podcast, episode four. I'm now a month into this thing. I'm having a great time doing this show. Thanks to everybody if you join me. I uh, recorded the show a touch early last week and then through the beauty of the internet was able to schedule it for Sunday. I was at Disneyland with my family, taking my four-year-old for the first time, her first trip to Disneyland. Gosh, I love Disneyland so much. I remember I was so into cars when I was a kid, I was, I just, I grew up, I think I told the story on the first episode of how my dad used to bring me home, uh, not every day, but like on a pretty regular basis, he would bring me home on his way home from work. He would stop at the store and he would get something for himself and then get uh, like a Matchbox or a Hot Wheels car. And I just had a whole hope chest full of Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars that I would just play with for hours on end. And I've just been into cars my whole life. And, uh, and now, so the first time I got to go to Disneyland, Autopia was my was like one of my favorite things to do because you could actually drive any like ride anything where you could actually drive. I always loved as a kid because of course you don't have your driver's license as a kid. So go-kart tracks I loved, bumper cars I loved. And at Disneyland you had the the Autopia track where you could actually be behind the wheel and drive a gas-powered vehicle around a really cool track at Disneyland and I gotta say, I didn't go on at this time. I, I tried to get my daughter to go on, but she wasn't super interested. She's only four, so we'll see. We'll give her some time. But I gotta say, they, they need to electrify those. My, you know, now with, with Tesla in existence and, uh, and proving how, you know, and Disneyland's have become kind of a fairly green, something of a healthier company. They, let's, let's maybe get a partnership or something with Tesla. They need to electrify Autopia. And then those cars, get some torque on those cars. Let's see those, let's see those kids rush around the track. Let's see those five-year-olds putting the pedal to the floor. Get some ludicrous mode going on those little things. But uh, the other thing that actually reminded me of Tesla on the trip was the California Screamin' Roller Coaster. If you've not been on it, it is the one really, well, not the only true roller coaster, but over at the California Adventure Park, which is the one next door, the 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 neighbor part, the complimentary park, uh, that's definitely recommended if you're going to be at Disneyland. There's a roller coaster in the very back of the park called California Screamin'. It's the only thing in all of Disneyland that goes upside down. You know, Space Mountain, which I is Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, still still my favorite rides. I've decided I hadn't been in about 12 years. So this is my first time going as a as a real sort of entrenched adult, and certainly the first time going with a with a, a child of my own. And I always loved Splash Mountain and Space Mountain back as you know as a kid and as a teenager, but I, I still do. But I've got to say, uh, you know, those don't go upside down. So California Screaming has one loop, but the the start of the ride, you board it over kind of on the side. It's sort of the side of the track. You hop in and then. You know, they check your safety bar, and then the tr- the coaster, the your 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 coaster car, sort of scoots up, not super fast, kind of goes around a corner, and then stops. And then there's a countdown. It just goes five, four, three, two, one, and then it launches you on a straightaway before you start going up into the 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 hill, the you know the slopes, the hills, the drops, the turns, and then eventually the 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 upside down loop. But that that initial launch when at the beginning of the ride totally reminded me of of a uh, Tesla, and but I gotta say the P eighty five certainly the P eighty five D is faster because I I sort of thought about it and then I watched other people do it later and I was like nope Tesla's faster <laughs> but uh, it was it was cool now and of course that coaster is electric but yeah so that was a good time. Uh, highly recommend it. if you have children and you've not been to Disneyland. Gosh, it is so much fun. It is just a 
special place, man. It is, I think, anyway. It's just, a, it's a blast. But anyway, uh, before I start the show proper, one more housekeeping note. I, I touched on this on the show last week. I'm all set up. Uh, I'll give them their plug at the end, but uh, I'm now set up with a voicemail box for the show. So if you've got a comment or question or a discussion point, for instance, you know, maybe you want to bring up uh, how much, hey Ryan, how much do you think the fully loaded Model 3 will cost? Call me up and leave me your question. The phone number to dial is a toll-free number. You can dial from anywhere. This is this is from the U.S. It's 1-800-606-0697. That's again, 1-800-606-0697. Pardon me, 0697. And the invitation number, it'll ask you for an invitation number or basically an extension. You're going to dial 15469. That's 15469. So uh, call me up. I'm gonna, I want to start. I want to make a new segment out of this. Maybe do some, you know, sort of a good way to get a little sort of some kind of interactivity with the audience on the show. Uh, figure we can generate some some good segments, some good discussion that way. My only humble request. So, you know, include your name, uh, maybe the last five digits of your VIN number if you want to I'd sort of identify yourself that way. That's how we always did it in the DeLorean community. Um, but uh, regardless, please try to keep it short. That's all I ask. Please don't go on in any, like, you know, 60-plus second uh, epic stories. Try to keep it fairly short, and we'll see how that goes. And if I get some good voicemails, some good, some good topics, some good questions, I will start that up. Uh, next week, and I want to thank lifeonrecord.com for setting me up with the account there to, to enable that voice mailbox. They, uh, well, I guess I'll give them their plug now. If you know someone with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, then uh, you can give them the unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted, which is what I'm doing here, or just put onto a keepsake, like a thumb drive, or, a, or even a burn to a CD. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. And with that, we will be right back, and we'll get to the news. All right, let's get to the news. First up, a ton of Model X mules continue to be spotted in the wild. Obviously, this is going to keep happening for another month until we get actual cars hitting the road. Of course, even the first cars hitting the road will be so very few. You'll you'll it'll be like a unicorn to spot one for a little while, but uh, even even here in the Bay Area, but. Um, Further along, Model Xs are being spotted in the wild. They, we assume that they are, uh, well, actually, let's get to that. So we've had pictures on the Tesla Motors Club website of a gray one. Because, of course, up till now, I should back up a second. We've only ever seen black or white, which, of course, is extremely common. Uh, it's, you know, to help line up panels and just, you know, you're just testing. You're, you don't care what the thing looks like. They're just testing mules. So we've only ever seen all black or all white uh, with you know no fit and finish, no trim, you know proper trim, no nothing, you know the the tail lights painted over white, headlights, etc. Now we are starting to see some further along cars, a gray car which uh, looks like the the same steel gray that's on the the S, a blue one which appears to be the ocean blue that is on uh, the S as well, the new blue, and most recently there was a beautiful shot of a multi-coat red one. Each of the, the X's had plastic wrap on the front and rear bumpers, as well as the side marker indicators on the front fenders uh, taped over as well. So the first thing to note about these is that uh, they're beautiful. Uh, because, I don't know, I mean, I've said this before, I have never really been an SUV guy. Uh, I just don't, I haven't seen a single SUV that I really, or crossover in the, you know, whatever, if you want to get technical. I just, I've, they don't really, I don't find them sexy uh, the way I do like a nice sporty sedan like the S or, or a, you know, an Aston Martin or, you know, something, something like that. But um, the X is looking just sharper and sharper as it, as it sort of gets finalized. And 
These colors no doubt came out of the new paint factory per Tesla's own words on the subject on the last conference call when they said that the they're going to break in the new paint factory with the X's and then eventually get the S's going through there as well. The other another point of to bring up here is that these are almost certainly not founders cars that are in founders, you know, investors, customers hands on the streets because uh, first of all, these these mules all have the same just crazy blackout tinting on the rear windows. Uh, they wouldn't be doing that, which is, of course, you know, the hide, hide so you can't see in the car, particularly that back seat that Elon keeps, keeps teasing us with, that it's, that it's a, you know, a sculptural work of art. They would not be tinting the heck out of rear windows on cars that they intend to be in a customer's hands. Uh, the tape over the side marker lo turn signal is covering another uh, another T logo as well. Uh, pr it's probably not a founder's badge, I would suspect. Uh, but the uh, and then the other thing I want to bring up with this is you know if you kind of pull back and think, I mean, all, everybody that's on the waiting list, which is not me again, but everybody that's on the list, I know th those guys are just in hell right now. Just <laughs> just the anticipation. So for some of them, it's been three years or more. But man, I can't imagine the stress, but also the excitement going on at Tesla right now. Uh, this must be a crazy, yet simultaneously incredible time that everyone on working on the Model X is, they may be completely frazzled and sleep deprived right now, but I gotta figure that they're all gonna look back on this for the rest of their careers, no matter if they're at Tesla lifers or if they go somewhere else, they're just gonna look back on this as as just one of those fond memories of like, oh man, yeah, I I remember when we we were finishing the Model X and it was uh, you know such a crazy project with the the uh, Falcon wing doors and you know our the second car after the S and the pressure. So you know if you happen to work at Tesla, if you are someone listening to this show who's on the Model X project, I ask only that you stop and take a breath and try to appreciate it if you can in the moment. And the other thing I want to say is thank you. Even though I'm not buying an X, thank you for killing yourself to get this card done. I mean, reservation holders and Tesla enthusiasts alike, thank you and we do appreciate you because this is just the next step. You know, the X is the next step. We're going to have so much more to say, obviously, on the X over the next month and the next few months and, uh, yeah, next one, two, three, six months. It's just going to be a fun ride. But uh, this is a this is like, if we, you know, we're on the, the precipice of it now. And it's it's the wait is no doubt just agonizing for the reservation holders, particularly if you're maybe on the SIG list or the really early production list. But... Um, I got to just, yeah, I try, I try to look at it from Tesla's side as well. Those guys must, must be kind of simultaneously in heaven and hell, <laughs> possibly over the course of the same day, it might go from heaven and back to hell and back to heaven again, but it is going to get real fun with Model X real fast, but boy, it is looking sharp in those three proper colors. The red looked great. I actually think the X looks really good in ocean blue, just super sharp. I encourage you to look up the picture if you haven't yet seen it for yourself. Next up, buckle up for a good laugh. Aston Martin, who is certainly no company to laugh at, is building an eight, well, except for this, is building an 800 horsepower Rapid sedan. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That it wants to have out in two years. As an EV, they want to build an electric 800 horsepower Ravide. That's good, right? That's good. But for some reason, for some reason, Aston CEO Andy Palmer saw fit to take a shot at Tesla when announcing this car and, and asked about the inevitable comparison to Tesla. He said, quote, We don't do ludicrous because ludicrous speed is stupid. Someone cue Taylor Swift. The haters gonna hate, 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 hate. Dude, why did you go and do that? 
Why did you go and do that? I don't understand. Now, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that the reason for this may be because he may not, I hope I'm wrong on this, but Palmer, Andy Palmer, may not actually care about building electric cars. See, the Rapid EV is an emission standard compliance car. He said, quote, if you want to keep making V12 engines, then you've got to do something at the opposite end of the spectrum, end quote. And what he's referring to there is the ever rising emission standards from the likes of California, America in general, global companies as well. I mean, it's the only reason uh, that Fiat sells the, the, I mean, the 500E is only sold in California and Fiat, like Fiat doesn't even want to sell that car. They're not even interested. They, they only make it because they have to. And th that's, you know, I actually feel bad for 500E owners. I'm sure there are some of you out there. I, I would uh, not feel confident buying a car that uh, the manufacturer didn't even care about, didn't even want, really want to have, want to have to support. I know I'm projecting a little bit here, and we don't, I don't know if what's actually going to be the case, but it does seem like Aston Martin doesn't really want to care or get serious about about EVs. They're doing it so that they can keep they can keep making their V12 eight mile per gallon cars that they've uh, been making for their for their whole lives and they make beautiful cars don't get me wrong and in this case the repeat ev they're aiming it aiming for it to be 800 horsepower with 200 mile range and all-wheel drive with a price tag folks 200 to 250 thousand dollars so let's review <laughs> <laughs> the Model S does better than that now, uh, not technically in the horsepower number, but in the certainly in the range factor and in the all-wheel drive factor, and for half the price. And then by the time Aston actually gets this car out, if they ship this car at all, because we've seen plenty of talk from traditional auto manufacturers and not a lot of action, Let's fast forward two years. The Model S is going to be getting 400 miles to a charge by that point, I'd be willing to bet, because I am of the opinion that when Model 3 is releasing, I think the Model 3 will... We, we, we know that Elon has already said outright that it's going to have about a... two. We can expect a 220-ish mile EPA rating on the standard battery because that's sort of he's a, he has established that as the magic number that that makes people comfortable there will inevitably be a larger battery offered as well on the model 3 which I plan to get and I think with battery advancement as well as the fact that the car is smaller uh, and lighter and gigafactory factor I am hopeful that the bigger battery in the three is going to be close to 300 miles, if not maybe right at 300 miles. I could very well be wrong on that, but I've got to figure if the base model, base pack is 220, I got to figure we're looking at 275 to 300 for the big pack on the three. And that means what do you do to make the Model S a more sort of sexy, luxurious, upper-end option once the three hits. Well, the biggest way that Tesla does that is with uh, range, is with more range. I think, because Elon has said in the past that he, he said we could build a 400-mile battery right now. It's just not practical, you know, cost-wise, etc., for them or for the customer. So I think in two years... If Aston Martin gets this electric repeat out, that uh, the Model S will be will be rolling <laughs> with double the range <laughs> for half the price or thereabouts, you know, 100, uh, 125 maybe at the at the at the most, right? So for for a fully loaded edition model. So uh, oh, and then the, there's one other little thing as well which of course applies anytime we're talking about another car company making a, an electric car. 
Aston doesn't have a, na a free nationwide supercharging network. Will they sign on to utilize Teslas? Elon has indicated in the past that he is open to that because he really is keen to have more electric cars on the road uh, not, and not, not just keep, you know, dominate the technology all for himself. So, but as it stands now, Aston is offering a car that basically, despite the fact that it has 200 miles of range or what proposes to, won't really be that viable for road trips without a charging network and cost twice as much for and has what could be half the range of the Model S at that time. But in any case, more EVs is a good thing. But you know, we could have avoided this entire segment, <laughs> Aston and Andy Palmer. There's no need to take a shot at Tesla. Why, why not be gracious about it? Why not say, the Model S is, Tesla is building, has built a wonderful car and we aim to uh, build a, a wonderful car with our own, you know, Aston Martin history and flavor to it. So that's what you could have said, but instead you take a shot. So, okay. Unless he's, of course, being totally literal. Maybe there's going to be a stupid mode. Like that'll be the button, <laughs> the button in, in the repeat EV will be stupid mode. Uh, as the one step past ludicrous. Who knows? I guess time will tell. On a more positive note, the other uh, big, the third and final big story for the week here on uh, Ride the Lightning, Forbes, who of course is an extremely well-respected publication in the, the business world in particular, they wrote a, ab an absolutely wonderful piece this week calling Tesla the most innovative company in the world. Their piece was completely spot on. They absolutely get it. I'm including a link to this piece in the show description. So I highly encourage you to go read this. I'm gonna read you a few excerpts now because I just feel like even, even media outlets that have been supportive of Tesla generally don't seem to really fully get it and get, you know, what Tesla's doing and why they're doing it and how they're doing it and why the way they're doing it is a good thing for everyone. So I'm going to read you a few, but Forbes, I really think they captured it in this piece in calling Tesla the most innovative company in the world. So here are a few excerpts. Quote, peel back the aluminum skin of a Tesla Model S and you will see what high-end disruption looks like. The motor and gearbox are a fraction of the size of a combustion engine drivetrain mounted low between the wheels to create a larger crumple zone for passenger safety. The chassis is like a giant skateboard built to accommodate lots of battery wattage. Next, quote, it makes, refer, Tesla even makes its own plastic steering wheel cases, a part easily and usually outsourced because suppliers, much to their regret, tried sending their B-teams and took months to turn around designs. That's the Elon factor at work there. Next little excerpt I really enjoyed. Promotions, and actually this is something I didn't know about the internal structure of Tesla. Quote, promotions and bonuses at both Tesla and SpaceX are built around a one to five rating system. Okay, nothing unusual there. With four and five being great and phenomenal respectively. Quote, you don't get the two highest ratings, says Elon Musk, unless you have done something innovative. It has to be significant in the case of Phenomenal, something that makes the company better or the product better. Anyone can be an improver, HR, finance, production. They can all figure out how to improve things, end quote. I thought that was absolutely fascinating, a very interesting glimpse into how Elon Musk motivates his his employees and runs Tesla. A couple of more quick excerpts for you here. Uh, quote, learning in an environment of uncertainty requires a willingness to admit mistakes and move quickly rather than digging in and doing nothing for fear of admitting failure. In fact, obsessively attempting to avoid failure can lead to the greater failure of missing the big opportunity. They're saying this all about Tesla. I thought that was brilliant, a, just a perfect way to sum up. The, again, they, Forbes is getting to the essence here. 
Next excerpt, quote, the Tesla team is successful at achieving seemingly impossible goals, not just because they work harder than anyone else. It has a process for solving complex problems that is effective. Quote, I operate on the physics approach to analysis, says Musk. You boil things down to the first principles or fundamental truths in a particular area, and then you reason up from there. Then you apply your reasoning to those axiomatic principles to assess what is really possible and what is simply perceived to be possible, end quote. This method leads to innovative solutions that even Tesla executives didn't think were possible. Last excerpt here I wanted to read for you. Says J.B. Straubel, quote, Elon challenges everyone to work incredibly hard. I know that sounds stereotypical, but I think he does it to a degree that is pretty unusual and it is highly uncomfortable for most people, but the results are fairly undeniable. If you challenge people to work hard, they achieve more than they think they can. Most leaders don't want to do that, end quote. And then adds Doug Field, vice president of engineering, quote, we take leaps of faith that are like jumping out of an airplane and designing and building the parachute on the way down, end quote. I thought that was... That was really funny and also, again, sort of spot on. And I thought uh, that was a good, good last excerpt to read for you. Again, I just think it's good to see a major respected outlet like Forbes really get it with Tesla. Because so many media outlets simply don't. Or, as we learned on last week's show with Reuters, it's even worse. And they have some sort of weird axe to grind against Tesla, despite the fact that they're supposed to be an unbiased media outlet. So that is it for the major Tesla news this week. Uh, I will come right back, do a couple plugs, and hit the road for this week. All right, we've come to the end of episode four of Ride the Lightning. I am just having a blast doing this show. Thank you so much, everyone, for your supportive emails, your kind words, a lot of you tweeting me, at DMC underscore Ryan, emailing me at the show email address, which is teslapodcast at gmail.com. I encourage you to, uh, if you're interested in video games or geek culture, meaning, you know, uh, superhero movies, entertainment, you know, uh, TV movie stuff, as well as games. Follow me at my day job on IGN.com. You can find me all over the place there. Uh, check out nerdstyles.com for game and geek-inspired t-shirts, which are of my own creation. That is a fun little side project I've got going on. Uh, it's still summer, so the summer rolls on, so uh, why not get yourself a t-shirt? Also, be sure to subscribe to Dave T's weekly Tesla newsletter at teslaweekly.com. I really enjoy the, uh, the uh, newsletter format that he puts together and mails out each and every week. Also, I'll go ahead and mention them again. I mentioned them earlier. Uh, the kind provider of our brand new voice mailbox on the show is lifeonrecord.com. So again, uh, if you've want to use it for, uh, the, I guess the service is mostly intended for creating sort of a, a an audio birthday card or some sort of gift or of memory of, you know, anniversary or something like that. Uh, you can get all, all your friends and family to call in uh, and and sort of create a an audio, a big audio uh, scrapbook, I guess, if you want to call it that, as it were. So you can, you can check that out. Go over to lifeonrecord.com to learn more. So again, that wraps it up for episode four of Ride the Lightning, the unofficial Tesla Motors podcast. I guess the number one bit of constructive feedback I've had on the show is uh, you know a number of people not a fan of the Metallica theme song and bumpers. You know, I try to keep those really short in case you don't enjoy them. Pardon me. At some point, I definitely love to get new custom music. I don't have music creation skills. If you have those skills, I would love to hear from you. If you enjoy the show and would like to uh, to donate your time and and talents, um, we can talk details on you know maybe something something if just that's appropriately Tesla e and 
Uh, probably have to have maybe a couple of lightning crash <laughs> sounds in it, but you know, about a 15, 20 second opener, maybe a, then a quick five, five second sort of bumper and, and a, a fade in, fade out outro. But uh, yeah, if you're, if I, I, I am taking and respecting the feedback. And so, yeah, if you, if you think you can help me out with, with a theme, a theme song and bumpers, drop me a line, teslapodcast at gmail.com. So thanks once again to all of you for listening and supporting uh, the show. It's been number five in the uh, automotive section of iTunes podcast, which is just, just totally blowing me away. I love it. I, I thank everybody so much for giving the show a chance and hopefully sticking with it. Uh, if you're listening here to episode four, I'm going to presume that you're sticking with it, but tell your friends. There's, uh, there's plenty of room, plenty of uh, space for the, for the show to grow, but off to a good start, and I'm, I'm just really appreciative, appreciative of everyone's support. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you for episode five next week. Thank <laughs> you.